Welcome to What's Going On, the weekly podcast and video cast of First United Methodist Church in Yankton, South Dakota. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of What's Going On. I'm Pastor Katie here at First United Methodist in Yankton, South Dakota, and I'm glad you could join me for this episode. If you're watching this series, you know that today I have my what I like to call my boss with me, um, but other people might know her better as my daughter, Abigail. Uh, (laughs) One of the joys of juggling um, working and parenthood is that sometimes you have to just make things work when your daycare isn't available. Uh, And so that's what we've been doing this week. And so Miss Abigail has been uh, helping out uh, at the church in her own way, being um, a source of cuteness for us all. Um, and so thank you, Abigail, for joining mommy today. At some point, I'd love to get my son Ethan on the podcast. Full disclosure, I did try, but um, being three uh, is a really hard thing to stay focused. And so it did not go as I was hoping, but I'll I'll keep trying periodically so that uh, those of you who watch the podcast get to know him as well. Um, But I do want to talk this week. Last week, thank you for your kind words after last week's podcast. Um, I do want to just give you an update on my mom in that she is uh, home and doing much better. Uh, She is by no means like a healthy, uh, like Wonder Woman kind of thing, but um, she's doing much better than she has for a long time. And so we are so grateful for your prayers. We are so grateful for um, the staff of the Brookings Hospital and what they were able to do to help her and for home health care and just continue to love and pray for those who who are in your life, who maybe love someone or who is someone who has chronic illness because um, it's an everyday thing for those families and um, it can be really tough. So thank you. And I hope that it helped you in seeing some of the ways that I interact with scripture and interact with my faith and my faith community to help me in those hard times, because my hope is that you do as well. Um, But today I want to jump back into uh, the kind of namesake of our podcast in what's going on, because we have some things going on that I want you to be aware of and a few changes to make. two things that uh, that are kind of ongoing. So the first thing I want to talk about is something very exciting um, that is happening next week, which is a little bit kind of quick turnaround from when we're kind of promoting it. But um, this summer in August, we did a mom's night out with the moms of our um, children and youth aged kids uh, to get them together to say, hey, we love you. And, and to talk about how to, again, do do parenting, do ministry, do work, do all of it um, in a way that doesn't burn you out and glorifies God. Uh, when we were promoting that, we did get some comments of, our, well, when's the dad's night out going to be? Uh, and now we can tell you it's going to be next Thursday, September 29th. Uh, it's a Thursday evening. Um, Dave Corneman is kind of been willing to take the lead on it um, because there's a lot of things that I know about but one of the things I do not know about is being a dad I can tell you about being a mom Um, so I wanted to recruit uh, some of our really experienced uh, dads in the church who could be a good support for the dads who are in the thick of it uh, in raising uh, children and youth. And so Dave has recruited Mark Mooney and um, Kurt Dykstra, uh, and they're going to yeah. invite the dads out next Thursday out to Mark's shed that um, if you want to know the address for it, talk to Dave or Mark, uh, he knows where it is, um, to watch some football, to grill some steaks, and to talk as well about um, how do you do it all? How do you raise up your kids in faith? How do you be a strong dad, a strong leader? Um, How do you, um, and how, you know, how can you plug into the life of the church and and the ways that dads are so important and so needed? And so we just want that to be a fun and uplifting time for our dads. Uh, It's going to be bring your own beverage, but we will provide the steaks and sides. And so, um, Let's make sure, let's try to get all our dads there if we can. And I would tell you who's playing football, but to be honest, I don't know and I don't really care. <laughs> so that's where I'm at with that. Um, so 
Thank you to Dave and Mark and Kurt for taking the lead on that event. And uh, we are hoping to kind of make some of those things um, at least quarterly events. Um, so be on the lookout. Or if you're someone who's like, you know what, I had such a great time with that. I'll plan, you know, when and where for the next one. That would be awesome. Um, because my schedule is bonkers in the fall. Um, Lisa in the office here uh, today was just joking with me, like, are you, are you ever going to be here? And it feels like no. <laughs> and why is she saying that? Because next week, Tiffany and I are heading to Leewood, Kansas, just outside of Kansas City, uh, to the Church of the Resurrection for something called the Leadership Institute. The Church of the Resurrection is Adam Hamilton's church. He's the pastor, senior pastor there. And it's the largest church in America, the largest Methodist church in America. And one of the things that they have done is uh, create this thing called the Leadership Institute. It's been going on for years and years. And, and basically to bring in speakers, to offer resources, to offer uh, connect, connections. Um, so it's a great sort of learning opportunity for us. Uh, we always uh, get a lot of good ideas and a lot of um, resources from that event. And, and it's also just continuing ed as well. Um, and so Tiffany and I will be leaving on Tuesday and coming back Friday for that. So I'll be out of the office. So Wednesday night service, Reverend Carl Watkins. I love having retired clergy in the church. Praise the Lord for the Watkins and for the Pierces. And they're just wonderful to have. They're great support for all of us. Um, and so I'm grateful that he's going to come and lead and worship and going to be talking about World Communion because October 2nd is World Communion Sunday. And that is a Sunday where we will all, um, all over the world, Christians will be doing communion. So um, we're going to talk about that. So next week, I am out. One of the things that was scheduled during the time that I'm gone is XYZ, which is our extra years of zest fellowship time. Uh, I'm going to be moving that um, to the second Wednesday of the month. It had been the first Wednesday of the month. I'm finding that that's really difficult. Uh, I have ministerial and things that happen on the first Sunday of the month as well, or Wednesday of the month. And so we're going to move that to the second Wednesday of the month. So in October, that's going to be on whatever the second Wednesday is um, at 10 o'clock on Wednesday mornings. That is X, Y, Z, extra years of zest. So, you know, if you're re retired and you just want to come and visit or play a game or just have somewhere to go, some people to be with, that's what that's for. And I enjoy it. I love getting to visit with you. And so please uh, make that uh, something hey. that you, you can do and be a part of. Um, let's see, what else do we have going on? Um, oh, <clears throat> I do want to talk a little bit this week. Um, I had the opportunity to do loads of love for the first time. Um, and I'm a little bit ashamed that it took this long for me to be able to do it, but it's a bit difficult. I tend to be very protective of my oh. evenings because, uh, that's time I get to be with my family. And, um, but the... I always kind of say I'll be a backup and two of the people who had signed up got sick. And so I, I went for the first time and I am blown away. One, it was the craziest night for loads of love that our church has ever seen. Um, we ended up paying for almost $300 worth of laundry uh, in the course of three hours, uh, which is a lot. Um, and and what I saw, one, I saw people that I recognize, people who come in for help at the church at various points are, you know, they're the same people that that are at the laundry mat. Um, but uh, so I saw us actually really meeting people in their need, um, especially as we know that inflation has been rising. It really hits people that, um, especially the working poor, I would say, are the ones that get hit the hardest because they have jobs, they're trying to make ends meet, and when your basic necessities uh, go up in price so quickly, um, it makes it hard to to get all the things done that you need to get done. And laundry can be it adds up quickly, is what I've really seen, you know, and. They know what they're doing. They're putting as much as they can in those in those machines, and 
Um, so people have really, there's some people that have come to really rely on the loads of love ministry as a way to help make ends meet, uh, when things are tight. Uh, but I also saw people who did not know that that was a thing who came just to do their laundry and for us to be able to say, we want to bless you tonight and do this, um, really was meeting people with the love and grace of God, um, uh, we had some college students that heard about this ministry and so came, you know, college students, they're, they're in school. They don't work full time. Um, paying for laundry can be, can be a big chunk of whatever small budget they have. And so, you know, that is a great way, you know, I, we've had people in the church to say, how do we connect with our college students? How do we connect with the people on campus? You know what? Loads of love, loads of love is a way that we can do that because, it's meeting a need. It's something that they that they really are grateful for. Um, the other story I want to share from that night is there was a young gentleman who came in with his dad, and they just kept bringing in basket after basket of clothes. And you know, we went up and said, "We'd love to be able to bless you and help you pay for some of your laundry tonight." And the dad said, "You know, what's the catch? What's the catch here?" And there was another lady who who uh, is somewhat of a regular. Uh, of the ministry. And she said, there's no catch. This is from the Lord. And the young man had just come out of a treatment facility and he was washing all of his clothes because he was going to be heading back into, you know, the world into life and, and was a bit overwhelmed by that prospect, but to be met right away, uh, unexpectedly by grace, um, that we were willing to do that for him. He was so moved that he wanted to donate the rest of his laundry detergent to us and what we were doing. Um, and those are just a couple of the stories uh, from my hour and a half that I spent there. Uh, I brought Ethan with me. He was a great little helper. He loved to be able to hand the pods off to people. I was watching him. Don't worry, uh, those of you who are, oh, he never once tried to eat one of them. So that was good. <laughs> um, but uh, it was just a really incredible experience. And one of those times where, you know, I, I've been talking so much and I hope that you start to hear that this has been a recurring theme, but I believe that God is leading me to this because I think it's something that we need to take to heart, that we need to be the hands and feet of Christ. And this is one way that we are really doing it. Like if you really want to see ministry in action, if you really want to see where the rubber hits the road and what we're talking about, when I say that we need to meet people where they are, we need to offer the love of Christ to people who need it. You go to the laundry mat and you just offer people, here is $4 to wash your clothes. You are meeting people in their need. You are offering them grace and the love of Christ. And you are just loving on them in a way that can be truly transformative. You're making connections. You know, the people who've been doing loads of love for a while, they know the people and they start to develop these relationships and they start to build this, this um, name for our church through this ministry of this is, these are people that care about us. These are people that care, that are trying to make a difference in our community. And if you're like, you know, what, what is the purpose of our church? You know, I really, I really want to, to do something with my life. I really want to make a difference. I want to help people sign up for loads of love because that's the kind of thing that's going to change your life. It's going to change your perspective. You're going to start to see uh, the people who have real need in our community. You're going to start to see them as people and you're going to feel great that you actually were, were doing something, uh, being the hands and feet of Christ. <laughs> I will say it over and over again. We have to live out our faith. We have to love and serve others. We cannot say that we love God if we are not loving our neighbors as ourselves. And so I was blown away. I'm excited to go back. Tuesday night, there were three of us that it was our first night and all three of us were blown away and said, I can't wait to go back. I can't wait to be a part of this again. Um, I really feel like this is what we're meant to be doing is this kind of work. And so that's my encouragement to you. Find ministry, sign up for the things that, that we're putting out there. We're doing this for you. This is how we be the church. This is how we live it out. This is how we do what God has asked us to do. And so I'm just thankful for the people who, um, 
who saw this need in our community. Trinity Lutheran really began this ministry. I'm thankful for their invitation as they saw the need grow and they knew they couldn't do it themselves and invite us, invited us and the UCC church into that ministry. And so let us let us meet meet that need and let us open our eyes to the other ways that God can use us in Yankton to make our community a better place for all who live here. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is that uh, church conference is going to be coming up in November. I know that feels like a long ways away, but it's not. And one of the things we need to have done by church conference is our nominations. And that means that we have three people who will be rotating off leadership team this year, one in finance, one in SPR, and one in trustees, as long as well as um, our conference delegates, that's an every year thing, and our lay leader is an every year thing. Um, and so we are needing people who are willing to step up into those roles. And so if you're interested, um, we're going to have the applications on our website and also available at the church office. Uh, fill out an application and then um, and then uh, the leadership team will be looking that over and inviting people on to into those roles. Um, we especially, uh, we we will have three, three, <laughs> three annual conference delegate spots and one lay leader spot. Um, those are spots that the current people can also reapply for. So if you are currently one of those and you say, I really like to keep doing that, um, you can reapply for that. That's There's no limit on that. One of the annual conference delegate spots will have a seat on leadership team of the voting member. Um, so be perfectly considering that. We're also, you know, um, if you have any questions about that, please reach out to me, reach out to any member of leadership team. You see their names and photos on the slides. They're also on the board. That's right when you walk in to the main entrance of the church. Um, they are there for you. So with that, I think... I think we're going to sign off for this episode of What's Going On. We hope to see you in worship. <laughs> we hope to see you in worship real soon. God bless. Thank you for joining us on this episode of What's Going On, a video and audio podcast of First United Methodist Church in Yankton, South Dakota. We'd love to have you join us for worship on Sundays, and we have two options available. 9 a.m. is our contemporary service, and 10.30 a.m. is our traditional service. You can find those online as well at our website, www.firstumcyankton.org, or on YouTube.